Now, more than 200 women diagnosed with cervical cancer should have received earlier intervention, the HSE admitted last night. This comes after Limerick mother of two, Vicky Whelan, I beg your pardon, Vicky Phelan, uh, who is terminally ill with cervical cancer, was misdiagnosed and wasn't informed until last year, despite the information coming to light following uh, 2014 audit. Minister for Health Simon Harris has announced a review of the cervical check programme following the results of this case. And joining me with that story and others this morning are Francis Fitzgibbon, CEO of StoryStock and Director of the Irish Academy of Public Relations, Ellen Gunning. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Uh, Ellen, um, when, when you, you read about uh, uh, Vicky uh, Phelan and what's happened to her, you think this can't get any worse. I mean, somebody dying, living a death sentence effectively in public mm. uh, as a result of this. And then you, you, you read, well, actually, no, there's potentially another 200 who could. So this is a beyond a disaster. It's catastrophic. It's absolutely catastrophic. The, if you think of cervical check, it had developed quite a good reputation. People had, I think women had generally accepted this is a good thing, you should have a, a smear test, you should just get the all clear. And I, I don't know if it registers with people that nobody goes through life thinking they might have cancer. But you have a smear test and somewhere in the back of your mind you think, I hope everything's okay. And you wait for the result to come through, which uh, there's a certain amount of relief and you think, oh, that's great, I'm fine. And, and everybody... I think every woman agreed that this was a good thing, it was good to do it on a regular basis, but we all assumed that somebody was checking and that when you were told you were all clear, you were all clear, there was nothing to worry about. The really scary thing about this is that 200 women, as you say, there were 400 rechecks, but of those, 200 needed either a colonoscopy or a, a second smear. And what the cervical check did was they contacted the doctors and asked the doctors to contact their patients as they felt appropriate, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but there, there was no obligation on them to contact people to let them know that there might have been a problem with your smear test. That is absolutely beyond comprehension. Catherine Murphy in the doll said yesterday that she was booking a second smear test, that she doesn't have faith in the system. And that's the big issue. I think every single woman looking at the Vicky Phelan case said, oh my God, I have no idea whether or not my last smear test was actually clear. The, the system can't cope with it all being done again, but the, the issues are much greater. Who decided that if it was a good idea to do a test, that you weren't actually entitled to the results of that test or to the results of a recheck? And if the recheck, if the recheck was done and nothing was found, you could be nothing but delighted that somebody contacts you and says, by the way, your smear was taken as part of a group. It was rechecked, and I'm delighted to tell you it's all clear. Uh, there, there, there are so many uh, angles uh, to this, Francis, that it's hard mm. to know where to begin. I mean, first and foremost, oh, let's not trust women with uh, uh, medical information about mm. uh, their own bodies. Um, you know, and the the absolute sexism, stroke, condescension, stroke, patronisation, stroke, whatever paternalism that you want to well, label, you want the, to put on. The word you use is trust, and that's that's the keystone of of all of this. There's a couple of issues I was writing down here, one of which is trust, trust in the system, as Ellen was saying. Um, the second one is cost. Um, you know, the, the, we referenced 200 people. Are they all going to get two, two and a half million? Who's going to be responsible for that? Is this, that just going to be, you know, hands up, sorry, that was a mistake. That, where could that money be used elsewhere in the, in the health system? That's going to put further pressure on, on, on the system. Uh, the third one is political. Uh, you know, we sat here not so long ago talking about the misdiagnosis down in the Kerry General Hospital. Um, you know, it points to me to a wider issue of uh, lack of accountability in the HSC and the culture that comes from that. You know, what heads are going to roll from this? None. I can tell you that sitting on this couch here today, none are going to roll from that. And that leads on to a, an ongoing culture uh, within the HSC that, you know what, the, the mistakes will happen and it'll blow over. And, and until we come to a time where we, we shout stop and say, no, you know, this, this cannot happen. You know, a, a mistake is when you put avocado on a burger in a restaurant instead of tomato. That, that's a mistake. You know, this, this is something that is so big and so large that you have systems in place that say, OK, mistakes do happen. But you know what? We recheck them again in the, in the centre in Austin. Uh, and then when we do find out errors or mistakes, we have a system in place that says, OK, these were rechecked, that's wrong, we go back, that goes to the doctor, the doctor tells the patient so we can catch it in time. It's simply not acceptable that someone got a diagnosis in 2011 and had a 90% chance of living. She, she would have lived. You know, she would have lived and to get that, that, that effectively what is a death sentence from, from a lack of accountability that is a culture that has permeated the HSE for, for, 
for as long as I can remember. The, 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 the cost of this, the human cost of it to, to Vicky Phelan, plus any other women who find themselves in her situation is incalculable. Mm. Can't put a price on that. There's um, the reparations that will be paid, which could, could potentially uh, be anything up to half a billion mm. and, and the loss of that money from the system and the good it could do. The damage done to cervical check mm. in terms of its reputation. How is any woman in, who's thinking about this going to trust them? Also, there's the panic induced in women who've had uh, um, smear tests over the last five, six, ten years who are all going to be saying, I need to get another one. The pressure that's going to put on the system mm. and, and also when, when you have that volume of pressure and panic, the mistakes and errors will, will only increase. Mm. So this just gets worse and worse. The ripples of this could go on for years and the damage in human costs and financial costs to the state are, I mean, you, you can't calculate them. One of the things that I was impressed with yesterday was Simon Harris as minister, because I expected the usual political guff. Right? I expected we will look into this, we will try to ensure nothing ever happens, and nothing came beyond it. But he actually said, and I, I thought he was very, he was quite powerful in what he said. He, he said that obviously this should never have happened. Uh, he was uh, appalled on behalf of B Vicky Phelan, but he said that he wanted, as minister, he was apologising to her, but he also wanted to take action. And he did two things, because all day people had been fluffing whether or not a doctor should tell a woman that she had this extra result or an extra check. And he said the first thing he did was he instructed that cervical check would make sure that every single doctor had informed their patient, which seems a very simple thing, but it was very proactive and it was immediate. So that at least you know as a woman, if your check has, if you have been rechecked, you will, if you haven't been told mm. until now, you will now be told. And the second thing he said was that he wants the HSE, and this is the, the one I have a question mark over, he wants the HSE to put a system in place to ensure that this never happens again. He didn't put a timeline on that. The, the cervical check letter going out to a doctor makes sense. It has to be immediate. I think he has to come back within a week to 10 days and say, here is the system. This is what we are now doing. And here's what happens if you're concerned. It, it doesn't matter that no. you may be all clear. If you're concerned, here is what you can do right now. And we'll take the hit, hit on it and get extra checks done. Well, we'll, we'll see whether he, he will uh, introduce that or not. Uh, um, Francis, just very quickly, um, the Bill Cosby verdict, mm. uh, a, a, a victory, a, a watershed moment for Time's yeah, Up and Me Too. First trial collapsed. Um, you know, such a huge figure, the father of America, not just America, but worldwide. I grew up with Bill Cosby, I think it was Sunday evening for a half an hour of TV. My parents allowed us to pick two TV shows a week. Mine were Alf and The Cosby Show. Um, he was a seminal character in our life and, and huge in America. Uh, and it's, it's great to see that nobody's above the law. That's the key message from this. Nobody's above the law, nor should anybody be above the law. Um, justice is served. I saw a lot of the women talking after the court case, uh, they were obviously very happy with the verdict. He wasn't, but you know, he, you, you, you do the, you do the crime, you, you, you do the time. Yeah, it, it is extraordinary. Like he I mean, he's not just a famous comedian and a famous TV star. This man was so powerful and so well got that at one stage that he was a very serious contender to own NBC, one of the three mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. American television, you know, yeah. national television stations. That yeah. you know, one of the most powerful media organisations in America and therefore in the world. That's yeah. how big and how powerful he was. And the arrogance of him it, it, it was kind of shown yesterday in the court case with these little outbursts that he still feels that he shouldn't have been convicted. I think he still uh, denies the allegations and I think that put the victims through the trauma of having to testify and all the rest of it. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's not a good thing for him. It's, it, it shows a certain level of arrogance. That well, and, and if, if somebody that big and powerful can be taken down, well, then others can be too. Yeah. And maybe he's Which the first of many. Yes, indeed. Listen, thank you both very much that's indeed. Uh, plenty more to come on the programme. We'll be back after this break.